Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing my best of beauty video for the year of 2017. <sighs> I tried a lot of new products in 2017 and some of them are real winners. And so in this video, I'm going to take you through the best of makeup, best of skincare, and best of hair care. So I'm gonna start with skincare first because I think that's what most of you are here for. For some reason, 2017 was just the year of honey in skincare. I fell in love with putting honey on my face. <laughs> And so I have three-ish things, actually four things to talk about. The first two I unfortunately don't have with me right now because I obviously use them. Um, but the first one is the It Skin Honey Sheet Mask. I have ranted and raved about this sheet mask. It's just phenomenal. It's a very wet type of mask and it has honey extract in it, which is amazing for your skin. The second sheet mask that I have to talk about is the Sephora Honey Sheet Mask. I will put both of these in the info box down below for you to go check out. I don't have them with me because I use them all up, but those two sheet masks rocked my world in 2017. The next two products under the honey category are two face washes or face masks. They're marketed as face washes, but I use them as face masks because there's no surfactant in them to like do any cleansing. So I I use them as face masks and I know that a lot of other people who use these face washes also use them as face masks. It's from the brand called Worker V and I absolutely love this brand. I discovered them in Minneapolis when I was there for a student chemical engineering conference. I went to a farmer's market and Worker V was like chilling there in their cute little stand and I was like so intrigued because you know I love honey and skincare and I have not been disappointed by anything that they do so far. The two standout products that I really loved in 2017 was their honey face wash. And so this is the one for a normal to oily skin and this is the one for dry skin. They have very similar ingredients. The ingredients for the dry skin honey face mask aren't on the bottle, but it is for the oily skin ones. So I'll just read them off to you. It's raw honey, bomb. Raw honey is an amazing humectant. It has tons of antioxidant properties. It has organic oils, including sesame seed oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, rosehip seed oil, which I freaking love, wheat germ, and worker bee propolis tincture. So propolis is really fantastic. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. It helps to soothe the skin. So these are amazing for soothing really irritated or skin that's breaking out. I personally use like these masks whenever my skin is like really, really having a rough time. I find that it almost instantly calms down any breakouts and calms down irritation. Redness is gone. The size of my breakouts has been reduced and that's after using these for like maybe 30 minutes. Jar packaging is not my favorite, but I talked about this in one of my engineering school vlogs. I think it's my, my like, chill with me on Friday, study with me, engineering school vlog number two video. If you wanna see how I use this mask, you should go watch that video because I do a great little demo about how I do this without contaminating the jar. But I do have to say, if you're in the market for an amazing face mask, you really, really should try these. They are, they're just so, so good. I have never seen anything else like it. That basically wraps up all of the honey skincare that I discovered in 2017. Next, I wanna talk about some acids and so, <sighs> this Paula's Choice Resist Weekly Resurfacing Treatment 10% AHA, which is a glycolic acid treatment. This has just been doing amazing things to my skin. It really has helped me a lot with texture in the year of 2017, and so I have to give a shout out to this guy. It's pretty expensive compared to other brands, but I just have never found anything quite like this. The next product I did discover in 2017, and this is the Ordinary's Salicylic Acid 2% Solution. This basically has replaced my Paula's Choice BHA gel, which is way more expensive than this guy. Um, and so I have to give a huge shout out to this. This is an amazing BHA. It hasn't irritated my skin at all. It really does help with clearing up congestion in my pores and also blackheads. So this guy is tiny, but really, really powerful. Let's talk about oils. My standout oil for the year of 2017 has to be the Ordinary's Rosehip Seed Oil. Literally replaced my Tarte Maracuja Oil and you know how hardcore I advocated for the Tarte Maracuja Oil and its ridiculous price tag. I literally thought it was worth it until I met this guy and this completely took over. This just makes my skin so soft and so supple and it never interferes with any of my other skincare products. It doesn't make my skin overly oily. It never congests my pores because it's not super heavy. This is just an amazing oil. I'm actually about to run out. I have about yay much left and so I probably need to pick up another one but I just oh my god I can't say enough good things about this oil whoops I probably should have talked about this while I was talking about the face washes but this is actually a face wash this is 
I think one of the best skincare products that I discovered in the year of 2017. This is the Alchemine Tea Tree Oil Face Wash sold by Sorel Care on Amazon. It's like around $11, I think, and it is one of the best face washes I have ever encountered in my entire life. And at that price tag, I feel like other face washes can't even hold a candle to this because it's super affordable, but super effective and super gentle. But yeah, this is vegan. It's cruelty-free. It has a gentle surfactant in it. It doesn't have any irritating ingredients. I just, I absolutely love it. If anything sold by Sorel Care, you can use my discount code SCKIA10 for 10% off on Amazon. Everything at Sorel Care is really, really affordable, but if you add the extra discount, it gets even more affordable. So like, truly, I am so grateful to have discovered Sorel Care in the year 2017. I guess Sorel Care is another one of my 2017 favorites because they're just an amazing brand. They're vegan, they're cruelty free, they're BDS safe. The people that work there are some of the nicest people I have ever, ever met. Their products are really high quality, but at a great affordable price tag. And so that's really something I can stand behind. And so I support Sorel Care 100% and they were definitely one of my top favorites of the year 2017. Also from Sorel Care, this Aldo Vandini Pure Shower Gel literally rocked my world in 2017. These Vandini shower gels are some of the best shower gels I have ever encountered in my life. They have really gentle ingredients. They smell flipping amazing. Oh my gosh, it just smells so fresh and so feminine and so girly, but not sickly sweet or anything. And that's just this shower gel. The other shower gel that I really enjoy are the Charming and the Sensual ones. The Charming one is a little more of a muted scent. It's like a lilac-y frangipani scent, which I really, really love. And then also the Sensual scent has tamarind and ginger, which is just a really lovely combination. So these shower gels, also super affordable from Sorel Care. And again, you can use my discount code SCKIA10 for 10% off anything at Sorel care year round. So the two sunscreens that I think stood out for me in the year of 2017 were these two that I used so, so, so much. Obviously the Josie Marin SPF 47. I'm not even gonna talk about this because I've talked about it way too much. And then also the Paula's Choice Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. I used this almost every day during the summer because I did work in Houston, which is really hot really muggy and really humid and so this sunscreen was my savior because it's really really matte and it really helped keep my skin in balance and not looking too too oily throughout the day because of the humidity in the air and then finally the last skincare product i have to mention is a body lotion this is the numis med ph 5.5 protective skincare lotion this is my second bottle and i'm about to run out i need to get a third one because i just i use so so often this really stands out to me because it's just such a wonderful body lotion because it's super lightweight it's not greasy, it sinks in really fast. And again, like everything else sold at Sorel Care, really affordable. Okay, so that wraps up all the skincare. Let's move on to makeup. I guess I'll start with lips. I went through a lot of lip products in the year of 2017. All right, so I'm gonna start with a lip mask. This is the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask. You know I was ride or die for the Coors Lip Butters. Step aside, Coors Lip Butters. This takes a cake. This is the best lip mask I've ever used in my entire life. It is so hydrating. It's so thick. It's so wonderful. I just absolutely love it. It's great to use overnight to help hydrate your lips, but also it's great to use under really drying lipsticks like liquid lipsticks. I find that the texture can be thinned out enough to where you can create a protective barrier on your skin and then apply your liquid lipstick and your lipstick won't dry your lips out super terribly because this is protecting your lips. This is such a staple in my like skincare, lip care routine, I guess, and I have little mini sizes so that I can take with me traveling. So yeah, if you're looking for a lip mask, look no further. 2017 was the year of lip liners. I have never ever been a lip liner person until this year and I have three standout lip liners to talk about. One is from Makeup Forever, one is from NARS, and one is from Bite Beauty. All right, so those are the three lip liners. This is the Makeup Forever one, this is the NARS one, and this is the Bite Beauty one. What I love about all of these lip liners is that they have that creamy texture that I really crave in lip liners. I can't stand the formula of MAC lip liners because I feel like they're so dry and they tug at my lips and they just don't give me a smooth, even line. Whereas all three of these are absolutely a dream to apply. And I love the colors that they're in. They're very like neutral, pinky, mommy nudes, which I've really been digging. And so these lip liners really stood out to me. I love using these lip liners just on their own, underneath other lipsticks 
lips, but especially with a gloss over top. I love doing lip liner with a gloss. I think it looks really, really nice. And the longevity of it is surprisingly good. Lip product that I think got the most use in 2017 was my Dior lip balm. This stuff is stupidly expensive, but I keep buying it because I just can't get enough. It just gives you the most beautiful, glossy pink pout. It's just so beautiful. It's like as glossy as a lip gloss would be, but without the stickiness of a lip gloss. And it is actually really, truly hydrating. I think the liquid lipsticks that got the most amount of wear for me are definitely the Marc Jacobs lip cremes. The two shades that I have are Shush Blush and Hot Cocoa. So here is Shush Blush and then here is Hot Cocoa. They are just beautiful colors. I think the formula is one of the best liquid lipstick formulas I've ever encountered. They're really hydrating somehow, but they still resist transferring to a pretty significant amount, I think, considering how creamy they are. And I love the applicator on these. It's a nice dofa applicator that I think makes it really easy for you to like really carve out your lips. And so I love these. I am considering getting more colors, but definitely Shush Blush and Hot Cocoa are my absolute favorites, especially Shush Blush. I think is so complimentary on my skin tone. And so I used it a lot in 2017. So just like every other year, 2017 was a year of orange lipstick for me. And so obviously my NARS Red Square Velvet Matte Lip Liner got a ton of use. And then a new addition to my collection, courtesy of my friend Sophie, she gave this to me for my birthday, Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche Liquefied Lip in the color Puree. This color, you guys, I know a bunch of you recommended this color to me and I was like, you guys know me so well. She is just the most beautiful red-orange color ever. And this formula, I did not expect to like this formula. I thought I was going to hate this formula because I thought it was going to be too transferable. I thought it was going to be too liquidy or too creamy, so it's going to smudge everywhere, but it really doesn't. It does stay put. It leaves a nice stain on your lips and it's really hydrating and it smells like all of the other Bite Beauty lipsticks, which I really like. I was really into brownie nudes in 2017 and so my Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick in the color Ashton did get a ton of use. It is very similar in color to Marc Jacobs Hot Cocoa but it's just like a tad more yellow and so just depending on how I was feeling or what my outfit was I definitely went between the Marc Jacobs Hot Cocoa or ABH Ashton if I wanted to get a brownie nude lip going on. Speaking of a brown nude, my Bite Beauty lipstick in the color Cha got a ton of use lately. I do have to say this is a newer addition to my collection, but I definitely used it a lot and it is so pretty. It's right there. These formulas are absolutely insane. I love the Bite Beauty and Muse Bouche lipsticks. Oh shoot, I forgot to include my Bite Beauty sweet cream lipstick with my like red orange lipsticks, but I don't know where it is. Don't get it twisted, Bite Beauty sweet cream was also my jam during the summer. I'm almost done with it actually. I probably need to get a new one. But yeah, I absolutely love the formula of the Bite Beauty um, Amuse Bouche lipsticks. I think they're just so creamy and hydrating, but surprisingly long wearing. I have two glosses to talk about and then we're almost done. First gloss, obviously NARS Dolce Vita, such a pretty lip gloss. I just could not get enough of this during the summer. It's just so pigmented and so pretty by itself, but then also layered over any of the lip liners that I talked about, really, really pretty as well. And I just, I love NARS lip glosses. I don't know what to tell you. And then as basic as it is, the Glossier lip gloss, I freaking love because it's exactly what it describes it as. It's like a cushiony, ultra glossy lip gloss with no color in it. And so when I was talking about wearing my lip liners with the gloss over top, this is what I was talking about. It's like the beautifulness of these colors and the long wearing nature of lip liner with a gloss on top so that it's like really cushiony and wet looking. Oh, so pretty. And then finally, the last lipstick I have to talk about is obviously my NARS Damage lipstick. This is a new one that I opened up because I used up my other one, but this is one of my favorite lipsticks of all time. It's such a beautiful reddish grape color. I just cannot get enough of this color. It is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. I just love it. This is my third or fourth tube, I think, and I will just continue to repurchase it because it is that good. Okay, now we're gonna move on to face and eyes. And so I guess I'll start with face. 
foundations, you are not going to be surprised to see my NARS Radiant Tinted Moisturizer, but you may be surprised to see a new foundation, and this is the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Soft Luminous Foundation. I have mine in the color Golden, and it's a pretty perfect match for me. This on its own, this on its own, these mixed together, absolutely beautiful formulation for dry skin. I think it's one of the best I've ever discovered. I used these a lot in 2017, and so I had to give a shout out to both these foundations. To kind of match with the foundation, I did get the pressed powder, which is the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Powder. And this by far has to be my absolute favorite setting powder ever. The Laura Mercier Translucent Powder is okay, but it's not the best for my dry-ish skin. This powder really does give such a beautiful luminous finish to my skin, and it also adds a little bit of extra coverage. In the same category of concealers, the CoverFX Peach Concealer really rocked my world in 2017. I had a lot of late nights in 2017 as I was in like my junior year and then my senior year of chemical engineering school and so I had got those dark circles. Normal peach tone concealer, but I, what I really like about this is that it has a very thin consistency. It's not really thick or goopy and it doesn't crease very easily and so I found that this layered really well underneath my Makeup Forever HD concealer and so that's why I have to give a shout out to this guy because it really saved my life. Also from Cover FX, the Enhanced Click Highlights I think were Probably my favorite highlights of 2017. I just love how tiny they are and how they really pack a punch. I am wearing bubbly on my cheeks right now and so that's what the kind of like soft glistening you see on my cheeks. I'm not wearing any like highlighty blush. In fact, I'm gonna talk about the blush in a minute. Um, so any sort of glow you see is from these highlight sticks and they're just so, so cute and so tiny and so perfect. They're just really lovely. I absolutely love them. They pack a punch, but they're subtle enough to where you can really get away with being like, oh, I'm just lit from within. Favorite blush of 2017? Definitely the Glossier Cloud Paints. I am wearing both of these on my cheeks right now. I have Dusk kind of as my bronzer, and then I use Beam as kind of on the apples of my cheeks to add a little bit of color to my cheeks. These have a little bit more of like an orangey brown base, and so I think these are much more flattering on my skin tone. I absolutely love these. A little bit goes a very long way with these, and so you definitely get your money's worth with the cloud paints. And if you want to get anything from Glossier that I talked about here, you can use my link in the info box. It'll get you 10% off. Okay, close second to my favorite highlights has got to be this NARS highlighting palette. I think it was limited edition, but I'm not really sure. It's called the Bon Sable palette, and it's just so pretty. This color right here is kind of like a coppery blush color. I use this actually a lot as like a blush, but also as bronzer. I've really been into using blushes bronzer in 2017, and so I did that a lot last year. This highlighting color, absolutely beautiful, the tops of the cheekbones, and then also this white highlighting color, also really beautiful. I have to give a shout out to my friend Sophie. She shops so well for me. She also bought this for me. So go Sophie, you have amazing taste in makeup. Okay, so that wraps up all of the face products. Now let's move into eyes. Unfortunately, I don't have that many. Everyone asks me about my eyebrows and the only thing that I do to my eyebrows besides plucking them and threading them on my own, I just use a Glossier Boy Brow in the color Clear. I love how tiny the wand is. Do I think it's worth the money? Probably not. I think the e.l.f. Clear Eyebrow Gel is just as good. In fact, I think it has a better hold than this, but I just love the tininess of the wand. I love how tiny the entire product is and so, I like it. Favorite mascaras of 2017, I have two. I have the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara and then also the Makeup Forever Smoky Extravagant Mascara. This one is a little bit more volume building, but this one really lengthens my lashes. I also really liked the Dior Lash Primer in 2017. Really, really great for layering with either of these. And so definitely, I think I upped my mascara game in 2017. Favorite eyeshadow of 2017, gosh, I think I've talked about this so many times, but this is the NARS Single eyeshadow in the color Himalaya. It is what I'm wearing on my lids today. It's just the most beautiful, warm, shimmery, taupey, brownish gray color. Oh my god, it's just so pretty. I don't really know how to describe it. I'll give you a swatch that maybe you can describe it a little bit better than I can, but it's just so beautiful and it reflects so nicely wet or dry i'm wearing it wet on my eyelids but this is a dry swatch obviously and so i think it speaks for itself it's absolutely beautiful as far as other eyeshadows go definitely the makeup forever eyeshadows still my hands down favorite the marc jacobs eyeshadows are very very good but i still think these are my absolute favorite I filled up an entire Z palette with these, except for these two. These are not Makeup Forever, but the rest of these 
are and I'm really happy with my collection now. Makeup Forever eyeshadows are definitely some of the best in my opinion. In terms of value, I think the Makeup Forever eyeshadows are the hands down best in the industry in my just personal, super professional opinion. These are all my like sort of like more matte satin finishes and then in this palette I have my super glam fun pops of colors and also diamond finish eyeshadows for these four right here i've had these two that i did a purple smoky eye with like a really long time ago but then these are new right here i live for this green color it's so so beautiful that's what it looks like it's just i'm really into these colors lately i don't know if you can tell but with the nars himalaya eyeshadow and then this one like i'm really just like digging the vibe. Also have to give a shout out to my two Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows. Grandstand is still one of my absolute favorites. I still use her all the time. She's on this finger. I still use her all the time. And so I do have to give a shout out to her. Um, I've had this for a really long time now and it looks like I've barely made a dent in it because you really do need a really tiny amount in order to get your work done. You don't even have to use the Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows wet. You can use them just dry on their own and they are so pretty. And now we come to the cat Category of hair care. Unfortunately, I don't have that many products to talk about because I just really don't fuss with my hair that often. Like this is how my hair normally air dries. And so I really don't do much with it, but I do have some really amazing standout products that really give my hair shine and the softness. So the first one that I used for the longest amount of time is the Renewing Argan Oil of Morocco, a penetrating oil from the brand called Organics. This is an amazing hair oil if you have like really frizzy hair or really dry damaged hair. In my opinion, it has the most wonderful blend of smoothing ingredients. And so the way that I apply this is on damp hair after I wash it. I'll take like, I guess a quarter size amount, rub my hands together to warm up the product and then just kind of work it through my hair and it makes my hair so incredibly soft. The one that I use more often nowadays is definitely the Briogeo Risarco Milk Leave-In Conditioning Spray. This is is my second bottle and I use it almost every single time that I wash my hair even when I'm not shampooing my hair and I'm just washing my hair because I went to the gym or something and I want to just rinse out the sweat and everything I still use this on my damp hair and it really just makes my hair really soft and tangle free in the same vein the Briogeo don't despair repair deep conditioning mask is bomb to use maybe like once every two weeks or once every three weeks depending on like how your hair is feeling I use it once every two weeks and it really does the trick of really deeply conditioning deeply nourishing my hair it smells amazing and the hugeness of this tub I love because I feel like I'm never gonna run out because there's so much of it I mean I probably will run out because I do love this so much and I'm very committed to it but until that day I'm really really happy with this conditioner and then favorite perfume of 2017 guys it's still this one the Isimiyaki floral perfume I clearly clearly really really enjoy i've gone through an entire bottle nearly and when i'm traveling abroad and i go through a duty-free shop i'm gonna see if they have this because i love buying perfumes in duty-free because you don't have to pay taxes definitely gonna buy another one of these it's just something something of my signature scent now like everyone always associates this perfume with me in fact i have a really funny story one of my friends says that she can always smell me before she sees me because she can smell this perfume and she knows it's me okay so that wraps up my entire best of beauty video i hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss my empties video which is coming very very soon i am going to film a video with all of my skincare empties so that you can see what I've gone through, what I've repurchased, what I'm not gonna repurchase, that kind of thing. And then also in the same video, I'm gonna do a little hot new skincare tidbit because I do have quite a few new products to talk about. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. Happy 2018, I'm so excited for this year. I'm really excited to see how my channel grows this year and I'm really excited to get to connect with even more of you in the year of 2018. So thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.